This is the future legend, Luke Robinson, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. All right, we're back. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio on the Internet Icon. Handsome Jackie Jones, along with my right-hand man, One Inch Biceps, the power goat. No luck. Well, you, 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 you gave it up. I'm sorry. You uh, bring that up. Yeah. I, forget about it. All right, all right. Joining us right off the bat here, we have Tough Enough finalists. We have Luke Robinson with us. How you doing? I'm doing top shelf, and I'm glad you didn't say uh, runner up. Finalist sounds a little more, uh, a little less insulting, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think finalist is good. I, I've been, I'm not just going to say this because uh, we have a year on tonight. I've been saying it every week on the show. I thought you were robbed. I know you probably won't use uh, that terminology, but I really thought you should have won the show. Hey, uh, you know, you're telling me, and I think uh, a lot of people would agree with you on that one. And, and what it comes down to is, I think I said it all on Raw. Stone Cold said episode one he was looking for the next WWE superstar. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that I was most deserving of that of that title. Mm-hmm. What? Uh, on the on the finals, like um, when all the judges were uh, saying that they they thought Andy uh, won, did that surprise you? Because it kind of looked like you were you were shocked. Yeah, I was pretty shocked, um, especially Trish. Trish has always kind of been a big fan of backstage. A lot of the divas were like, "Oh, Trish has said such good things about you," and uh, she almost looked a little uncomfortable and nervous when she was on Raw. I was about to say that. Uh, the other big shock, Bill, I wasn't shocked about. We don't necessarily get along the best. Mm-hmm. Um, but when Booker T said that. Andy had the it factor that blew my mind. Uh, yeah. Like to me, that's the exact opposite of what I'd say. I didn't like. I'd be like, "Oh, he's a intense, hard worker, but doesn't have that it factor." So I was, yeah, I was shocked to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. You don't want to say like too much bad about the guy, but I agree. Like he's definitely big and uh, he looks impressive, but uh, like I think he kind of proved it on the uh, on the promo part, or you proved it that uh, to me you had way more of the you know the quote unquote it factor. You know what? And that's what the business is all about. Like, if you want to go to a wrestling competition, go join MMA. You know, it's, it's a different world. Uh, we're in the entertainment business. That's a fact. Obviously, your body has to stand up to the rigors of, of day-to-day. Uh, you know, wrestling way more intense than even that. Even, a, you know, a hardcore fan might think that's ever in the ring. Just hitting the ropes can toast your, uh, a normal person's body. But uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Uh, I don't think John Cena, Hulk Hogan... Stone Cold himself are crying themselves to sleep every night because people say that they aren't the best technical wrestlers, but you know they're they're laughing all the, all the way to the bank because they're entertaining. That's all people really care about. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to let everybody know if you guys want to call in tonight, it's five zero eight six four four eight five zero three, and uh, have a question ready. Now, uh, let's go back to begin. Like, uh, how did you even get like involved with Tough Enough? Well, they had actually contacted the casting company had contacted me, and I honestly I thought I was being pranked. I hung up on the guy when I first got the call. He was like, "Um, Chris from Shed Media," and uh, I was like, "Okay, buddy." I thought it was one of my one of my wrestling friends pranking me, so I hung up on it. And it was like two weeks later that I checked the WWE's press release and uh, saw that they were outsourcing their casting to that company. Called them back. I was like, "Dude, I'm sorry." He's like, "Oh, let's forget about it." And. Uh, I've done a couple, like, extra spots for Raw and SmackDown, you know, if they, they need the uh, security or paparazzi stuff and done a tryout. And so he told me, you know, I was on the WWE's radar, and they were kind of interested for, uh, you know, in some people beforehand. And I'd do a seven-minute audition video. They wanted some of my wrestling. And then, you know, you go through a pretty intense series of background checks and, and follow-up interviews and stuff. So it was a pretty intensive experience. And once I'd seen all the other... You know, some of the other finalists, I, to be honest with you, and this probably won't surprise many people with my attitude, but I knew I was going to the to the end of the show. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think uh, you just have, like, a, kind of a natural uh, heel, uh, like, vibe to your personality? Or I mean, <laughs> you know, I think that's a good I'm, thing. In this. Yeah, is, if you don't have that, I hate to call it a cockiness or an arrogance because, uh to me, I can back up everything that I that I say. And uh, God forbid you're in the entertainment business and you want to be in front of millions of people. And if you don't believe in yourself, then who is going to believe in you? You have to have that. And Stone Cold told me that himself. If you have to think like that or else you're going to get eaten alive. And, uh, again, God forbid that I actually believe in myself. And some of the things, I, I realize this. Watch, you get into watch the show back. And 
I never said anything that wasn't true, and I never had to blast anybody. The things I said that might have been controversial, it might have been, let's say, the way I phrased them, like with Eric, he was, didn't, did not deserve physically to be there. He was insulting to everybody who showed up in shape. Mm. And uh, when I said, you know, competition-wise, it was time to take him behind the barn and pull the trigger, that, that, maybe I put it in an abrasive way, but that was the truth. And I stand by every single thing I said, and I have no regrets uh, about what I said. And, uh, again, to me, it's here's kind of the strategy I took. In my personal life, maybe I went to made so many ways, but on the show, anything that I was maybe raised better than to say, that maybe it's in the back of your head, I said. And in that sense, it's reality. It's not I wasn't being anybody fake. It's the thoughts that are that are in my head that you might not say in a normal social setting. And the other thing is, while I'm on that subject, I want to address the Martin issue with a handshake. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a Bruins fan tonight. They're playing the Canucks. They don't shake hands after the first period. They wait till the end of the competition. When Martin left, if he would have won, I would have shaken his hand just like I did Andy. When he left, I gave him a hug and a handshake. Uh, that was the most ridiculous thing. People put me on blast for that. Oh, he's going to get eaten alive in a locker room. We're not in the locker room. We're competing to be in that locker room for a contract. God forbid I, I want to win a, a contract and win the competition and I don't shake his hand because I was pissed off. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's in that sense, I don't regret anything I did. And, and some things I, I do get misinterpreted. Some things I say get misinterpreted, but I stand by everything I said because, uh, you know, like I said, I have, a, a passionate self-confidence and, and a belief in myself, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that kind of won over Austin at one point? I remember when you were in the bottom three and you kind of stood up for yourself, and uh, it seemed like uh, that kind of got some uh, some respect that Austin. I I definitely agree with you on that. And again, he pulled me aside uh, at certain times off camera and said, "Look, I know I know we give you a hard time about it, but you have to believe in yourself like that." And uh, he goes, do you think I would if I would be Stone Cold Steve Austin right now if I hadn't had that same type of of, of belief in myself? And it has to. It, sometimes it's going to come off as cocky and arrogant. But he's like, I would have been stuck as the ringmaster and probably be forgotten by now if I hadn't had that same attitude. And again, that's another thing looking back that I was proud of because a lot of other people they froze up in the bottom three. They didn't defend themselves. They didn't have the confidence I had. And. Uh, he does a real good job of intimidating you, but I try telling myself, just like when he asked me to step in the ring with him, I, the same strategy I took is not to look at it like, oh, my God, I'm in the ring with one of my heroes. I tried to look at it as you are a peer. You belong in this ring with him. This is what you want your future to be. Act like you belong there. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, that kind of attitude uh, uh, hurt Matt Cross a little bit because uh, maybe he was a little bit too... Uh... Uh, I don't say too respectful, but you know he wasn't quite as out there as maybe he should have been. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that Stone Cold was not sending him home until he said, after Stone Cold gave him a three-minute diatribe about being a man and having some testicular fortitude, then he goes, permission to speak, sir? I think that was the moment that Stone Cold <laughs> was home. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like going to the bottom threes, Austin always had an idea of who he was sending home, uh, but left some rope to either hang yourself or save yourself with. And I think that was the moment Matt hung himself. Uh, gr another great guy. I, I honestly, it might come off on the show that I, uh, during the show, it took people a little bit to warm up with me. After, after the finale, every single person on that cast came up to me and said, you should have won. They partied with me all night in the hotel bar. They had a blast. They know who the real alpha, who the real top dog is, and I stand by that. It, it's not something that's granted to you by a panel of judges. It's something there's a natural order that people respect and understand. And uh, Matt, unfortunately, you know, didn't have that that belief, and he was waiting for his chance. And like Steve said, you can't wait for it in this business. Get a mm -hmm. ticket. Yeah. Now, are you still uh, are you still pursuing a wrestling career, trying to get to the WWE? No doubt, and that's the place I want to be, honestly. Like, I think that's where I'm best suited, TNA, ROH. Um, uh, I've never felt like I quite belong there. I, I'm i confident in my wrestling ability, but I always – I was watching a match the other day, an uh, indie match, with two two guys that are considered real good on the indie circuit and that have never you know, cut, quite broke into the, the big leagues, and they're wonderfully talented technical wrestlers, but I was like, man, you know what? It looks so much like a dance that I'd rather watch one sneer and a kick from Randy Orton than watch all this 
dancey, choreographed looking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I feel like I'm best suited for the WWE because ultimately, you know, they understand that, and you can't doubt, you can't, you can't dispute the numbers and, and their ratings. And who, they sell an experience, they sell an entertainment experience. Um, they don't necessarily sell quote unquote wrestling. You know, to me, people are into. Uh, technical wrestling should should become MMA fans. I just I love the combination of uh, guys like Triple H, Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, uh, and of course even your John Cena, Stone Cold. They did they didn't have to. Of course, some of those Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, they do some great stuff, but ultimately they know just the right amount to do, and mm -hmm. that's what I kind of respect. It's like enough athleticism, but also so much character and and the way they connect with an audience based on just facials and, and their body. Um, that's who I want to be. That's the type of wrestler I want to be, the type of entertainer I want to be. Yeah. Now, when you were doing the show, did that kind of go through your mind? Like, uh, even if I don't win this, you know, you want to win this, but even if you don't win this, uh, you don't have to show all I can on here, or get, you know, I'm on TV, and, uh, you know, maybe WWE will, will see that, and, uh, pick me up, even if I'm not the, you know, the final winner? Without question, uh, just being on the show, you know, can open up a lot of doors, and, mm -hmm. and that type of exposure people would kill for who, who've been working for years to try to be in this business. We got that loaded into two months of TV. And uh, I I have a, competitively, I have a what I call like a healthy sickness. I hate losing. So uh, I can't, it'd be a lie to say that I wasn't, you know, it wasn't eating inside not to win the mm -hmm. competition. But, um, and I felt the other thing on that note that I could have been the first, you know, I come from a, four or five years of indie background and I was trained by Tony Allen. I kind of wanted the first, the first tough enough winner that could handle that pressure of being the winner and not fall. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, i got a couple people here in the line. If you guys call in, just uh, wait for yeah. me to get to you. But uh, I'll let me get to them real quick here because they're kind of messing up the audio. Let's see. Uh, 518 area code. Who are you? My name is Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Uh, you got a question for Luke? Uh, yeah. What's going on, bud? Um, do you see yourself ever going to the WWE, like, ever? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, and hopefully sooner than later. Uh, you know what? It's been funny. I've read some of the, the Internet stuff here and there. I try not to get too into it, but people go, oh, why do we need another Miz or Alex Riley? To me, those guys are uh, a bad haircut away from kind of being goofy. And I don't want to be – I think they're both, you know, great guys, but I'm saying I'm not – I'm not either one of them. I want to be the first Luke Robinson, not another Miz. And I think once people see me on a big stage and see the difference in the way that I talk, react, do things, that they'll say, okay, they'll understand the difference. And uh, there's no doubt that's where I want to end up. It's been my, my dream, and it's more than a dream. It's a goal. And, uh, you know, this just lit more of a fire into me to get there. Uh, and I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that you're my favorite from Tough Enough, and I I wanted to you to win. So. Hey, thank you, man. That means a lot. And, uh, you know, there's been an overwhelming positive support, which I think is cool considering the uh, negative kind of backlash that some people take from my attitude or, or the way I present myself. But uh, yeah. one thing about the WWE is, and again, it's entertainment business, and uh, there's nothing there that says you have to be the most loved person as long as you're entertaining, and, and that's what I hope I did for the fans of Tough Enough. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for calling in, Patrick. Uh, 347 area code. Yeah, that would be me. Yeah, who are you? Uh, my name is David. All right, David. Uh, I just, thank you. I just want to say, Luke, I was a huge supporter of yours when you were in Tough Enough. And I wish you really did did win. I really do. Hey, thank you so much, man. It means a lot. Thank you. Um, my question is, I you know, I, I know you're a loyal WWE guy, but if given the opportunity, would you ever consider going to TNA Wrestling or Impact Wrestling, whatever they're calling themselves now, or any other organization? I can't say that I would. Again, I've always, since I was a kid, I always would consider myself a WWE guy, and that's where I wanted to end up. Um, Again, I, I never think in absolutes. I never say never. But right now, my my goal is to get in the WWE, not anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And especially after all this, you know what I mean? It, it's kind of like a fire, and it's like I I told this to Steve's face. I'll I'll tell you guys. I said, Steve, when I win my first WWE championship, the last person that I give the the finger to. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, I know we'll see you soon, man. I know we'll see you in the WWE ring soon, and you're going to be the future WWE champion. Hey, thanks, sir. Thanks, David. This is Shawn Michaels, former WWE superstars, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com.